So here's my do-it-yourself oscilloscope that I'm going to show you how to build at home. It's actually uh, amazingly simple. This box I already had built uh, from an earlier project, so um, to do it right, I'd go ahead and cut these potentiometers in and the BNC connector for the lead. But inside, it's very simple. The LCD screen is a Nokia 3310. It's about ten dollars. The Arduino board is a Pro Mini from Adafruit. This is the three volt version, which is key because this LCD screen is three volts. So if you're using a regular uh, five volt Arduino, um, you have to step the voltages, control voltages for the LCD screen down. So this all it is power switch lcd screen board that's it i have these uh, header connectors on here uh, but this is basically for projects um, when i finish it up i'll take that all out for testing purposes i'm going to connect a homemade frequency generator to both our little oscilloscope we created and a professional one We'll go ahead and attach the grounds, then the leads, flip it on there. So this oscilloscope seems to work from about two millisecond scale, which is what I'm on here. It's very similar, up to the hundred millisecond scale. So if we just go ahead and start with 10, we can adjust our scale on this guy too. Let's go ahead and change our frequency up. Well, that's going down. So our frequency is going down. We'll turn this one up to 20. We'll keep going down. We'll scale this one again. 50. That's about 50. We'll go all the way down. Let's do the one second. Looks like that's probably about yeah, still still going, scaling it down. Um, and there's where my homemade uh, function generator ends, so I can't test it much further than that. But we'll go ahead and make this thing go faster. We'll get it looking good on this one. We'll adjust our scale here. So we can at least get it on the screen. Nothing real scientific, but um, definitely cool. So that's a regular sine wave. Let me try switching to triangle. And then square. And you'll notice in the square wave on this oscilloscope it draws a connecting line this one does not I'm not sure if you could modify the code to draw the connecting line a little better so that's probably on like a two millisecond scale Let's see if that triangle looks good not really but Sine wave does look okay. It's pretty cool for 40 bucks worth of uh, parts. Here I'm going to show you a practical application. I have the um, oscilloscopes connected to my the audio output on my laptop. I'm going to show you that it can detect audio output. It's a little messy. But it does detect it and keep in mind this is not an AC 
oscilloscope so it's only getting half of the wave so maybe if you chopped off the bottom of this oscilloscope up here it would look a little more like this one Let's take a look at the Arduino oscilloscope sketch. Um, this sketch uses code from the Adafruit PDC8544 library. Um, I have more than one library for this particular LCD screen and this is the Nokia 3310 or 5510 but um, the chip that actually runs the screen is this 8544. 44. So that's what these libraries will be called if you want to look for more libraries. Um, one of the main reasons I use the Adafruit library is she has included a, a command in here to set one pixel at a time. So starting at the top we're going to include the library for the LCD screen. Here's some information on connecting the pins. Um, I have reordered them. This matches my other library but um, so basically pin 3 is clock but this is how you would reorder it. If you happen to attach the pins in a different order you can come in here and reorder these. There's a bitmap being defined. So starting right here we need to use three of the analog inputs. Um, the first analog, <coughs> we're going to use that for the input from our oscilloscope probe. The second one is going to be a potentiometer that when we turn that potentiometer it actually changes a delay, the amount of time that it takes for us to sample this port and that will essentially scale the Y axis and then to scale the X axis uh, we have another potentiometer and just a quick note you can only scale this down so uh, since we're using the 3 volt Arduino um, if your signal coming in is 3 volts or less then you can scale it for instance if the signal was half a volt or something you can turn this pot and get the the signal up on the screen better. Now if your voltage coming in was higher than 3 volts um, you'd probably need to build in some kind of uh, electrical circuitry to scale that down for you. And then we go ahead and define some variables. There's a delay, um, so forth, a counter. Um, we define an array here that is 85 spots long. So our LCD screen is an, let me show you here, 84 by 48. So we have 84 pixels wide and 48 tall. So um, what we do in the simplest form is we will sample this analog input 84 times and then we write those pixels on the screen and then we display it. Um, so the sample is going to happen as fast as possible and we'll show you this loop here in a second but uh, they're using this delay we can change how fast we sample and then we go ahead and display it on the screen like normal. Void setup um, there's just some screen tests, splash screen. Let's look at the loop. First off, we go ahead and read the potentiometer for our y-axis. And then we go ahead and scale it because I found that um, if you have an incredible amount of delay, it just makes this useless. So. Um, then we go ahead and read the x-axis and then we scale it. And the reason we scale this one is because our screen is only 44 pixels tall so um, 
let's continue here. We have this for loop and a counter and when the, as long as the counter is less than 85 it's going to do it. So basically what it does is it reads the analog input and then it will scale that value. If we divide it by about 22 um, the number, the pixels will all stay on the screen vertically. So then this delay comes in. So basically this loop loads my array with 84 values. Now this thing is going to happen as fast as it can but you could add a delay say one millisecond in between each read and it actually is like changing the time scale on the oscilloscope. We reset this counter because we're going to use it again. We clear the LCD screen. We do the same exact for loop but instead of reading the values we've already loaded up our array right here. So right here our Y counter this is the horizontal axis so every time it does it it moves the pixel one to the right. It's this Y counter that we are incrementing every time this loop goes. So the picture, pixel is going to the right one spot and then the X axis up and down is the value of that's stored in this array. And then you display it and then you start over. So that's about all I'm going to go over on this video. Um, just a few things to wrap up. If you're interested or confused, <laughs> or both, about how to use for loops or recursion and also how to use arrays, um, I will have another video up. Um, you can find the link in my notes to get to that video. There's also another video that shows how I made this box. I originally made this for um, an analog scanner, um, but it's a nice multi-purpose box and I have more data. I also have the schematic um, posted uh, on my website along with the Arduino code. So.